Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is uh, Mukhtar Tilarberdi. He is Kazakhstan's deputy prime minister and foreign minister. He joins us from Brussels. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Your country was rocked by uh, violence in uh, early January. Peaceful protests against a hike in energy prices turned into uh, violent uh, riots. The authorities accused foreign terrorists and ordered a crackdown while receiving military support from Russia and former Soviet countries. After a few days of conflicting reports, the chief prosecutor gave an official death toll a few days ago, 225. However, human rights groups and testimonies on the ground say many more people uh, died. So a simple question, will you provide full transparency to the international community into what happened in your country a few days ago? Yes, for sure. As you know, the, our president uh, instructed the all law enforcement agencies to create the investigative group, uh, which will make the large scale investigation and uh, definitely uh, upon uh, receiving the all proofs and evidences of involvement of the terrorists and the attacks against the civilians and the uh, government officers and law enforcement personnel, we will share with our uh, partners in, with the international community. And uh, we are very open to cooperate with the uh, international NGOs and uh, human rights uh, agencies of the UN and the OEC. So will they have uh, access uh, to uh, possible testimonies or will you give it to them? Uh, yes, for sure. As we will uh, receive the all the results of the investigation, we will share. And as you know, now I'm, uh, I'm in Brussels. I came uh, to Europe uh, to meet our partners here in Brussels, uh, tomorrow in Vienna and uh, then in Geneva. The purpose of my visit uh, to share with the first-hand information and uh, to, um, to discuss uh, with my colleagues uh, how we can uh, cooperate uh, together uh, and uh, then uh, how we can deliver uh, the, our results of the investigation. Right. The President Kasim Jomar Tokayev spoke early on of, I quote him, 20,000 foreign uh, terrorist. Uh, it expects the question. No evidence has uh, been produced, uh, given those huge figures about 20,000 or foreign terrorists. This seems to be really an exaggeration, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Uh, the 20,000 uh, attackers was only in uh, Almaty city, uh, but uh, even more if we consider the all other 11. Uh, regions uh, which was under attack simultaneously. Uh, so um, uh, for sure, uh, as I already mentioned it, um, we will share with the results in with, uh, uh, investigation uh, with the proofs that they belong to the terrorist uh, groups. But you maintain that time. those are foreign terrorists? I mean, there was mention of Islamist terrorists. Uh, according to all witnesses on the ground, this was actually not the case. They were not foreign terrorists. Uh, they might have been rioters, but this seems a way for Kazakhstan to garner some international support. No, as, as he, uh, uh, our uh, citizens, uh, my friends, share with the evidences, among the, these armed militants, there are some uh, people who couldn't speak uh, Kazakh or Russian languages. They speak some different Asian uh, languages. And uh, some of the attackers uh, spoke uh, Kazakh language with a uh, big accent, which is, shows that they are not uh, uh, native uh, speakers uh, and uh, they learn the Kazakh. Uh, so uh, th that's why we have this kind of evidences. They are the foreigners among the terrorists. Uh, where is uh, the former president, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev? He has not been seen in public uh, since December uh, 28. And there are a lot of rumors that he uh, left the country or the, he, that he might have died or he might be in jail. Where is he? No, frankly speaking, personally, uh, me, I don't know uh, where is he now, but his press secretary said that he is in Kazakhstan. And uh, uh, for sure, uh, as I know, he not died or arrested or something like that.
Right. However, we've seen in recent days, first of all, President Tokayev removed him uh, on January 5th uh, from his position at the helm of the Security Council of Kazakhstan. And since then, uh, the president has removed some very close allies to Mr. Nazarbayev, even uh, some powerful family members from key position at the helm of the Secret Service, at the helm of crucial energy uh, companies. There seems to be a purge of uh, some of the former president's closest allies by the new regime, maybe because there is suspicion that he may have played a role into what just happened in Kazakhstan. What is your response to that? Yes, well, what I uh, can say that uh, uh, with the entering of our president Tokayev to the post of the chairman of the uh, Security Council of Kazakhstan, uh, so called it uh, the period for transition uh, was com uh, completely done. So, as you know, uh, that uh, the uh, transferring the uh, power took uh, some uh, time uh, when our president uh, Tokayev uh, became a leader of the ruling party and then the some uh, constitutional institutions like the Assembly of the People of Kazakhstan, and uh, finally. Uh, he took this position as a chairman of the national uh, of the Security Council. Yes. So uh, by that, uh, yes. Yeah, but the, the fact that uh, some of the son-in-laws who had very powerful positions have been removed, is this because the current president thinks his predecessor may have played a role in the violence we just saw? Uh, let's uh, speak, as you know, the uh, former uh, uh, head of the National uh, Security Committee, Mr. Masivov, uh, was taken under arrest, uh, and some, some other staff uh, of this uh, National Security Committee. But uh, I'm uh, sure that we need to wait for the investigation, for the trial, and the, for the court decision. Uh, then we can say that they were involved or not uh, in all these violent sections. Right, but so you're not ruling out. And the fact that some of the son-in-laws of the president who held very powerful economic positions are being removed is a signal that the president thinks there is a problem in the way the country has been managed and maybe uh, that Mr. Nazarbayev, his family, his close circle, did play a role maybe in trying to destabilize him. So you mean the son-in-law, Mr. Kulibayev? Yes, and others, you know. Yes, yes, yes. As you know, uh, the, uh, Mr. Kulibayev uh, uh, didn't have the, any official position. He was the head of the uh, Kazakh National Entrepreneurs uh, Chamber, uh, called Atamikin. And he uh, uh, voluntarily himself uh, uh, left this position just uh, yesterday, as I know. Right, but this is not by accident. You agree that there is a push by the president to maybe clean a little bit uh, some of the positions uh, that, because people did not like them? Uh, uh, I don't think that uh, he was pushing it, uh, pushed uh, uh, by anyone, but uh, I will say that our president, uh, during his last uh, speech in the parliament, made the clear uh, message to the people of Kazakhstan that uh, we need to avoid any disprop uh, wealth disproportion and the income gaps uh, between the different segments of the population. Right. Last question, because we're running out of time. Uh, for the first time, uh, there was a call for uh, an organization uh, uh, dominated, let's say, by, by Russia to intervene militarily. Uh, I understand uh, the forces are uh, leaving, but isn't this putting Kazakhstan uh, under the influence of Russia's president, Vladimir Putin? And what does it say in terms of having the ability to conduct an independent foreign policy? Uh, to be fair, I should say that uh, our law enforcement agencies uh, wasn't ready to stay against these massive terrorist attacks. So that's why our president uh, defined to refer to the, some uh, international assistance uh, uh, to fight them. But uh, as we have, uh, we have only uh, we, in the framework of CSTO, the only legal base to have peacekeep, foreign peacekeepers in Kazakhstan. 
We don't have any other organization or bilateral agreements uh, to receive the peacekeeping forces to Kazakhstan. So that's why we are uh, referred to the, to the CSTO. Uh, so uh, we received uh, the peacekeepers from all five uh, member states. It's uh, Armenia, Belarus, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Tajikistan. And as you know, the mandate of these peacekeepers was very strictly uh, limited uh, to provide the security for the strategic uh, infrastructure objects, and uh, which is allow us uh, to uh, take the law enforcement agency personnel and armed forces uh, to fight against these terrorists. And as you know, they completed uh, their mandate, and the peacekeepers now they live in Kazakhstan, starting from the 13th of January. And it takes uh, about 10 days, uh, uh, because due to uh, the gradually uh, transferring the security of these strategic objects to our uh, Kazakh uh, agencies. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister Mukhtar Tilaverdi, for appearing here on the France 24 interview. Thank and thank you for watching it. Stay tuned for more news here.